Alex Jones. I talked to Senator Dean Barkley's office this morning. $47,000 has come in from the radio interview we did Monday with Governor Jesse Ventura and former Senator Dean Barkley, who he appointed for a month after the tragic death of Paul Wellstone. Now, we're not going to panhandle too much here today. Governor Ventura uh, just told me through Dean that he wanted to thank everybody because he said that's why he got out of politics is he can't stand raising money. But the other two shysters raised over $30 million. Dean only raised 50000 previously. Now he's raised almost that much, and he's got the TV ads on today, and he has a chance of winning. So we're going to talk about that in 30 minutes when Dean comes on. We're going to talk about a host of other issues about the election and 9-11 with Governor Ventura while we have him for the first 30 minutes before uh, Dean Barkley. SenatorBarkley.com is the website, uh, joins us. But uh, uh, first off, uh, Governor, um, great audience, huh? Oh, Kyle, i got to tell you, you know, Alex, you got you got loyal people out there. you got patriotic people that saw the opportunity, and rather than sitting on their hands, they, they had an opportunity to do something about it, and they did. I can't thank them enough. It's, it's going to make that race up there extremely competitive. It's going to go to the wire, and Dean Barkley has a shot at doing it. And, uh, you know, if it can happen, it would be, it would be just as big as what I did in 98. And, and that's what we got to have happen. You know, you... You can't you can't overthrow something in a big heave. You gotta you gotta uh, chip away at it. You gotta go at the foundation of it. And the one thing I've learned is the only way to truly change the system in many ways you have to become part of the system to change it. And that's what we've got to do at all local, statewide, as well as federal elections. Absolutely, Governor. Well, we got Dean coming up in about thirty minutes to join us. But uh, first off, I wanted to read you part of an AP headline. Uses for the $700 billion bailout money ever shifting. And uh, they go on to say, first, the $700 billion rescue for the economy was about buying devalued mortgage-backed securities from tottering banks to unclog frozen credit markets. Then it was about using $250 billion of it to buy stakes in banks. Then the idea, which they've done now, was that the banks would use the money to start making loans again. But then it goes into reports that the banks admit they're just keeping it and giving it as bonuses, uh, in, including Goldman Sachs, Fourteen billion in bonuses of that money directly given to their executives right now. Well, you know, Alex, that that's undescribed. I mean, how do we throw these people in jail? I guess that's what it's going to have to get down to. Something, somebody's going to have to come forward and start putting people in prison for things like this. This, I mean, to me, that that's unbelievable. But I suppose they covered their butts. They probably gave it to them with no strings attached, so there's no that's legal it. recourse. I'm not sure. You know, I wasn't there to give that to them. I'm I'm on the sidelines, just like all of us, reading about it and reaching back and watching my wallet getting well, you're right. out of my pants. You're right, Governor. Yeah, losing huge money in your 401k, I would imagine, and any stocks you've got. No, you're absolutely right. The bill said no one can review it. It's all secret. No one can look at it. White House Press Secretary last Friday said it's secret. You can't look at it. But then the banks openly announced that they're giving it as bonuses. Um, well, that's the problem with our government today, Alex. It's so secretive. You know, we're supposed to be the land, home of the brave, land of the free. But yet we have a government, and especially this Bush administration, which is the most secretive that there's ever been. I mean, this looks makes Nixon look like a piker. <laughs> Man, it sure does. Well, you, you know what? You, you know that just because they can get Congress to say they can commit crimes that yeah, that's what Nixon said. Well, the president, when the president commits a crime, it's not a crime. This is a crime on its face, and they can claim that they've all been given pardons by Congress, but uh, that doesn't float. We need citizen grand juries, Ron Paul has said, uh, to go ahead and, and start investigations and indictments. I, I agree fully, and I, I think it, it fits right into uh, what Dr. Paul talked about with his book using the term revolution, and I think it fits right into my book where the, where the term revolution is likewise in the title. You know, I, I, I'm coming to the, to the distinct possibility without any thoughts about it, Alex. We need a revolution. Stay there, Governor, back in three minutes on GCN. Well, it's been great. Uh having Governor Ventura be such a big part of the show the last few weeks, his third visit with us in just the last few weeks, but he's off shooting a bunch of TV pilots and about to go back to Mexico, but we'll really enjoy it when he gets back. <clears throat> During the break, the governor was just 
absolutely, uh, you know, I mean, he's aware of it in the press, but I was, those headlines even shocked him more that, that we were reading um, about the bankers getting hundreds of billions of dollars and then saying it's secret who they're giving it to, but then they themselves are admitting, and I just read some of the headlines here, that they're giving billions of it to themselves per institution as bonuses for their executives. And then the White House and the Treasury Department have released the documents, but they're 90 percent blacked out. Governor? Well, Alex, I haven't seen this. You know, if this is all true, and I, I have no reason to believe it's not true, um, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm speechless over that. I mean, this is public money. This is the public domain. When I was governor of the state of Minnesota, we did nothing under the table. There wasn't anything going on, you know, that the public didn't have a right to know about. And in fact, when I left office, we turned every document of my entire four years over to the Minnesota archives, where anyone can go there and read anything, including bad emails, if they want to read about them. But I mean, this is not what our government is supposed to be. If this is all true, you know what? I, I'm to the point now, I'm urging everyone to vote against every incumbent. Vote them all out of office. It's the only way we can survive this, is to vote all incumbents out of office, to turn the whole thing over and until something of that magnitude happens, we're going to continue to have this going on. Well, you're right, and, and <clears throat> let me just bring you up to speed on this, uh, because the mainstream media has not been covering it. This is from the past bill, Section 8. Um, of uh, the portion of 1937, uh, the uh, bill, decisions by the secretary pursuant to the authority of this act are non-reviewable and committed to agency discretion and may not be reviewed by any court or law or any administrative agency. That's what it says right in the bill? Yes, sir. That's uh, Section 8, and this was first reported by... The Huffington Post, dirty secrets of the bailout, 32 words that none dare utter, but then it was picked up by mainstream media after that. Wow. I, 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 you know, it, like I said, the only way we can do it is to take back our government at the ballot box. You've got to vote all the incumbents out of office, is my opinion. That's, that's the way it needs to, it needs to and has to be done. Well, I mean, this is what happens over Whether you like the guys or not, Alex. Whether you think they're good guys or not, if they're if they're on board for this type of behavior of government, then we need a complete a complete flushing of the toilet, to put it into blunt terms. Well, that's definitely what it is. Uh, I mean, that's definitely what's in there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know. Well, thank goodness we got you out there reading it over the radio because I haven't had time to look at that stuff. I'm so involved in all the things that I'm doing, and I'm I'm caught off guard with it, Alex. Like I said, if that's what's in there, and that's how the operation of our federal government's operating today, then uh, we most definitely better have a revolution and take our government back. Oh, absolutely. It, it's. This happens in history over and over again where governments just go completely to seed and they, the last official act of any dictatorship uh, is to loot the Treasury. This is what happens in third world countries. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and well, let's remember, third world countries don't have a middle class, do they? No. And what are they trying to destroy in the United States today? The middle class. So what you have happening here is they're trying to turn us into a third world country where there will be only the wealthy and there will be only the poor. Well, I'm here Googling these terms because I want to find the video of uh, Perino, the uh, press secretary, saying, yeah, it's all secret. You're not allowed to see it. And, and uh, you can, uh, for listeners out there, you can just Google banking bailout documents blacked out, and then you can see on the Senate website where they posted them, and it'll say the top title, and then it's all blacked out. Well, what's the purpose of even posting it if it's blacked out, Alex? To <laughs> just show us that it's blacked out? Yes. <laughs> well, I just I just read the Associated Press where they uh, haven't doled out one bit of this to uh, any banks that are actually in trouble or to any mortgages, and, and, and the, the banker heads are on the news saying, we're just going to sit on the money and just keep it. And the minutes of Paulson's meetings he has every week with the banking heads and brokerage heads, those are secret. Well, you know, like I said, if, that, if, 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 
if that's the case and that's how secretive our, I, to me this this somehow has to be against the law unless of course like you said they specifically stated in the bill that no one could object or interject or anything but you can't take public dollars and be secretive with them that's a basic concept that I learned as a mayor you know when you're down at the mayoral level of government the local government you have to have everything has to be wide open it has to be above board and it has to be there for any citizen to be able to come and ask questions about it and receive answers about it after all alex it's our money it is people keep forgetting that and and people also keep forgetting that we are the government the government isn't supposed to be this separate entity it's supposed to be us well, I and think it's, it's our the, money that runs it. I think it's the over-the-top nature. I mean, who would imagine that in the U.S. of A., you would have corrupt bankers running everything, looting, it's really over a trillion dollars, directly into their own pockets as bonuses. I mean, who could imagine?